So oh, this video we're going to look at the Gauss-Seidel method. The Gauss-Seidel method uh, basically can is is in fact an improvement over the Jacobi. In order to get some idea about how where it uh, comes from, what I'm going to do is uh, here I've rewritten Jacobi for you, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to see examine a few values, uh, 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 you know, uh, one equation for instance, just one equation. So if I look at for instance here, x i k plus one uh, equals 1 over, and let's go with the first equation for instance. If I go with, um, for instance, x1 for the sake of argument, then this becomes a11 times b1 minus, now let's start looking at this. So we're going to get 1, 1, x1, okay? And then, uh, so I'm going to leave this, yeah, I, minus a1, 2, x2, okay and uh, so on okay so that's the first equation that I'm gonna get so this is gonna go up to 1n for instance xn and that I'll stop there now that's for i equals 1 of course that's the first equation in a similar way I can get the second equation I want you to notice something sorry I forgot those k's which I've just introduced back there now so k iterate now see that, that those k's so Okay, so now this is for i equals 1. So this gives us the iteration, iterative process for calculating the x1. For instance, k plus 1 is equal to all of this. Fine, this is okay. But here is where it gets interesting. If you see this here, x1, k, x2, k, first one, no problem. We use the initial guess and we calculate x1, k plus 1. Now, if you notice here, when I go to x2, k plus 1, b2, a, a, and there's x1 again. But wait a minute. Why should I use x1, k when I already have k plus 1? You see what I mean? So if I were to say here, k plus 1, I actually have already calculated it. So why not use the updated value of x1, k plus 1? Now, now of course, the remaining all of these x2, k minus dot 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 minus a uh, 2n x 2k the remaining I've not I don't have them so I'm just going to use this now in the same way when I go to the next one in fact uh, let me show you so here's the here, here's the next one now in x3 you see I already have x1 and I have x2 so rather than using k here what I can do is I can say k plus 1 here because I have it and same goes for x2. I can use k plus 1 because I've already calculated it. But x3 onwards up to xn will use the k because we, we haven't updated. We don't have a new, we don't have the values for x2. So what you can see is there is a, there is an interesting pattern developing here. Is if we see, if we look at, for instance, this first one. Um, so the pattern is that if you see here, when we're at x2, okay, the 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 uh, j's that are less than i we can actually update them because here this is one i can update it but once it becomes equal to this x2 uh, and onwards uh, they're not updated but and similarly when i go down here if you see this is three so this one is less than three so this uh, is a k plus one usable and uh, the two is also k plus one usable the three that's equal to it is not so what it seems to be saying is that I can actually set up two summations uh, uh, here, one for those uh, i, sorry, j going from 1 to, in fact, i minus 1, okay, and the other one going from, so, uh, or sorry, uh, uh, onwards. Let me, let me show you what I mean. So what I'm trying to say is that I can do this sum from j equals 1 right up to 1 less than the i, okay, in other words, um, whatever this is. So this is the i, so I can go up to i minus 1, no problem. And what I'm going to do there is, this is aij, of course, but the xj that I have here, I would use the k plus 1th iterate, because I have already calculated them. And then, of course, I'll have the, the remaining values, which will go from j equals, remember, I can't use i, i is already, uh, i is over here. So that means that I'll continue with uh, j equals i plus 1, in fact, all the way up to n, and then I have my aij's and xj, and that'll be just the k at iterate. So this gives me a new iterative process, which actually is smart, because 
the, the point is, look, if I have the updated value, why shouldn't I use it, in fact? Because I would think that would actually speed up the iterative process and may help converge faster. And that's, in fact, what does happen in Gaussidal. Gaussidal is significantly faster than the Jacobi method. So uh, let's try to see that in action with the same example that we did for the Jacobi. So let's do that next. So here's the example again. Um, now, this is the same example, but we're going to solve this using the Jacobi method. So the iterations will work something like this. From the first equation, uh, we have nothing yet, so we'll just write that as k plus 1, and that's our x1, x plus 1, and that's equal to 6 minus x3, which is the kth iterate, divided by 2, of course. The next iterative process, the iterative process is for x2, k plus 1 is equal to, and this one also basically is just 3 minus x3. Now, since we haven't calculated x3 yet, uh, there is no, we'll just use k here, and that also is divided by 2. So there's no difference so far. Now, it, the interesting thing happens when we get to x3, if you notice in x3, it's 4.5 minus x2. Now, x2 is already calculated here. So therefore, we can easily say x2k plus 1 on here and that's divided by 2. So the, the minor difference between this and the Jacobi would be that in the Jacobi, this one, this point, this is just x2k instead of k plus 1. And that does make a lot of difference. But let's look at how we would proceed to calculate this. Uh, so in this case, if we were to tabulate this, for instance, and here would be our k, so we'll go with, again, the same uh, the same initial guess vector, 0, 0, 0. So for k, 0.5 minus 1.5 is 3 divided by 2 gives me, uh, so I'll just show you here what I'm, what I'm saying, 4.5 minus 1.5 divided by 2, and that gives me actually 1.5. So you'll see here is the, uh, uh, the, the change begins to happen, the difference. So if I go further now here, the next iterate, the second iterate is going to be uh, already I'm going to see a difference now because I'm going to say 6 minus now, uh, of course, uh, x3, and x3 is 1.5, so I'm going to get 2.25 in this case. So it's 2.25, and over here, when I come here, of course, it's still it's uh, 3 minus uh, 1.5, so 1.5 divided by 2 is 0.75, so that becomes 0.75. Now here again, let I'll show it to you again, 4.5 minus... Of course, we're going to use um, this uh, as we did use this one here. So I'm going to use this over here. So I'm going to get 0.75 subtracting from this divided by 2. And that gives me uh, 1.875. So in this way, I can proceed. And, um, uh, and I'll show you 10 iterations of this next alongside with the Jacobi to show you the difference. So here in the Jacobi on the left that you see, over here, this is the Jacobi, and you can see that uh, it's just at the 10th iteration getting quite close to the actual answer, which is 2.52. On the other hand, in the Gauss-Seidel, you can see that happening uh, almost uh, here uh, is where you'd say this, actually even this one is very close. So third and fourth iterations, we're very close to the actual answer, and then after that, it becomes even closer, of course. So it's uh, it's a much faster method, almost going at, so what you'd really like to do is to compare, I mean, if you're looking at this, if you look at this last line here, the 10th iterate, and in this case, the equivalent would be to look at this one, which is the 4th iterate, and it is actually more accurate, in fact, or at least, I think if we, it's comparative, at least, and you will see that, in fact, it is, um, you know, only at the 4th iteration, whereas uh, for the uh, Jacobi, it happens at the 10th. So it, it shows you significant uh, that the Gauss-Seidel is significantly faster than the Jacobi. Anyway, that's a good example of uh, demonstrating how Gauss-Seidel works, how we calculate it, and we'll stop here. Thank you very much.